Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme one, element 15, drainage basins. Quiet please, I'm Mr S and I'll be your five minute teacher. A drainage basin is an area of land drained by a river and its tributaries. So for example, any rain that falls in Newcastle and Gateshead flows into one of the nearby rivers and then ultimately into the River Tyne. Let's start off by looking at some of these key term, terms that we need to know. We're going to start with the dotted line that runs around the outside of this diagram. So this represents the edge of our drainage basin and it's called the watershed. In real life that would represent the top of a mountain or the top of a hill. So any water that flows on the right hand side of this dotted line is going to end up in our main river here. Anything that flows into the left hand side is going to end up in a different drainage basin in a different river. Our main river channel is the main river that flows through that drainage basin. So that's the largest river. Where a river starts is called the source and every single one of these little branches which are called tributaries will have its own source. Now a tributary is a smaller river. Each main river will have lots and lots of tributaries and where two rivers meet, so it could be two tributaries, it could be a tributary to the main river, this is called a confluence, so that's the meeting point of two rivers. To give you a different perspective on this, and give you a bit of an idea of what it looks like in 3D. If we imagine that this diagram is a top-down version of this drainage basin here, so that's drainage basin one. This black line represents the watershed. So on the gap between drainage basin one and two, if water flows down to the right of this diagram, it's going to end up in drainage basin two. If it flows down to the left, it's going to end up in drainage basin one. One other thing we need to discuss then is how water actually moves within the drainage basin. You may be familiar with the water cycle. So the drainage basin hydrological cycle is the same thing, but we're looking at a more concentrated version, a more local version, which only looks at within a drainage basin, so it doesn't consider the sea in all of that. We're going to start with the input. So that's green on here, so that's how water gets in. So we talked about precipitation. Precipitation is a key word for all water coming in. That could be snow, rain, hail, sleet, whatever. As it comes in, it is then put into storage or it flows through the system. So we're going to go through this linear flow here to try and understand what's happening. So the oranges represent storage. So from precipitation coming in, we can be intercepted. Interception is where vegetation will store water for short periods of time. So it could be on the vegetation itself, so it might be resting on it, or it could be absorbed into the vegetation uh, through its natural processes and lost in other fashions later on, which we'll come to discuss. If it's not intercepted or after it's intercepted, it may be stored as ground storage or surface storage. This is more likely to be puddles or lakes. And then from there, we move on to a flow. So flows are movement of water. So if water is standing on the surface and that surface will easily absorb the water, then that will be infiltrated. So that's water getting into the soil. From here, two things can happen. It can either be stored in the soil as soil moisture, or if there's a lot of water, it was more likely that it'll move as through flow. So that's where lots of water starts moving through the soil back towards the river channel. If it does stay in the soil, what will end up happening is it will move further down into the water table and into the rock, so from soil into rock. And when water moves from soil into rock, it's called percolation. And then from there, it's stored as groundwater. Now groundwater tends to stay there for longer periods of time before moving as groundwater flow again back into the river channel. There's one other flow that we need to consider. If we have water that's being stored on the surface, sometimes it can and or more often than not, it will end up moving into a river and flowing down that tributary into the main river channel. 
or if there's lots of rain and perhaps a storm event then sometimes the rivers can't cope or the soil will be so saturated that it just flows down the surface into a river regardless if it's actually meeting a river or not. So that's how it moves through but it then has to leave the drainage basin as well. So there are two main ways that water will leave the drainage basin. Most water will leave via the river channel. It moves lots of water very quickly. But there's also forms of evaporation. So while the water is on the surface, if there's enough heat and direct sunlight, then water will be evaporated into the atmosphere. And that can happen while it's in surface storage and stood there in a lake or while it's flowing down a river. The other way is through transpiration, which is a type of evaporation, but it's specifically about how water is lost from vegetation. So sometimes this is called evapotranspiration. Well, that's it for today, but continue your revision on your own by trying the Now Try It tasks for homework, class dismissed.